The internet's 10 most popular business questions for beginners, <laughs> I think is what I typed into Google. Jeez. Whoa. That was. You tore the whole paper off. <laughs> How do I price my products? Okay, this is a huge question. We get this one all the time. We personally struggled with this for a really long time. Cause you don't know. You're like, I don't know how to price this and I'm scared that somebody's gonna tell me that it's too expensive. I wish there had been an online calculator. I wish there was somebody that could have just told me what to charge. Um, and so if for you, I've made that for you. You can go to jennydavis.com slash price my work and there's a calculator there. You just type in how much the materials cost, how long it took you to build the thing and it spits you out a number that you're probably gonna hate, but that's what you should be charging. That's okay. And here's the wild part. No matter what the price is, everybody's gonna tell you it's too expensive. If it's $45, they're gonna say, wow, that's too expensive. If it's $75, they're gonna say, wow, that's too expensive. So pick your expensive, and at least you're making more of a profit on one than the other. If they're gonna complain about your price, you might as well give them something to complain about. Yep. You wanna rip the next one? I do wanna rip the next one, because I'll do it gently. Ready? Where should I sell my products? How come yours looks better than mine? Because I have patience. Where should I sell my products? Guys, there are like endless options of places you can sell your products, especially with things like Facebook Marketplace, you've got Etsy, you've got your own website, you've got social media. There are so many different spots. You can sell them door to door. Yeah. You can sell them People on the shore. That. You can sell them on a sales floor. Oh my gosh. I don't want to hear this anymore. You can sell them so you won't be poor. <laughs> That was good. Pick whatever platform you think is gonna work best for you. I know everybody just assumes that like you must go to Etsy or you must go to Facebook Marketplace. Do you remember the video we made a really long time ago where we got all our friends in like the maker community to ask us, do you have an Etsy? And it started, the whole video started, do you have an Etsy? Do you have an Etsy? Do you have an Etsy? Because we were literally getting asked by everyone when we said we were like woodworkers and stuff. They're like, you must have an Etsy. And we're like, but actually we, no. We were making way more money just doing word of mouth sales and marketing, so. yeah. Yeah. Do what works for you. All right. Oh, we're going backward. Side to like. Oh. How do I handle taxes and legalities? Bah. You don't. <laughs> just those letters from the IRS, just shred them. If don't it's, do that. If it's important, <laughs> somebody will come to your door and let you know. Oh my gosh. They might have handcuffs, but. And they might kick the door in. No, we're, we're kidding. In all seriousness, taxes and legalities, it is a serious topic, but not as serious as a lot of us make it. Not until you make money. Uh, not until you're making a Ain't nobody gonna come money. after you till you're making 10 grand. Okay. If you haven't made 10 grand, just tell your CPA at the end of the year that you have a little side hustle. They'll ask to see some receipts and they'll take care of you there. If you made more than $10,000 in the year, take 300 of those $10,000 and pay a CPA to do your taxes because you're gonna slow your business down to try and stop and learn the whole tax code and then do yep. it yourself. It's just not worth it. Go make another sale and pay a CPA to do it. Yep. Oh look, it's the same answer. Whether, you, whether you've made less than 10,000 or more than 10,000, just Tell your tax guy what you're doing and yep. uh, don't fret. Don't worry about it. Just yep. keep track of receipts. But one helpful hint, if you really want something to do, open up a second bank account. It can even yes. be a personal bank. It does not have to be a business bank account. But if you open up another bank account and keep all your business money separate from all your personal money, your CPA will sing your praises They will the rest love of the year. you. Yes. I don't know. Oh, that was the first one. Okay. What kind of marketing should I do? What kind of marketing should they do? All of it. So marketing is, it's hard. Kind of like where to sell your work. There's so many different options. I always recommend doing the free stuff first. So mm -hmm. like get really good at the free stuff. Um, word of mouth and just talking to people to market yourself is always free. Social media is free. There's always ways you can spend money on it, but there's ways to do it free. I didn't understand at the beginning that there's a difference between sales and marketing. Yes. Sales is taking the customer who's interested in your stuff all the way through the checkout process and making sure they don't stop at any point along yep. the way. Marketing is getting them interested in you in the first place. Yeah, and getting so known. getting, generating interest. Um, I, I, that, I just didn't understand that you had to do that. I just thought there's people interested and all I gotta do is put my stuff in front of them. And that's really not how it works. You gotta generate your own interest mm -hmm. in your own products. And so um, that was a big, big lesson for me. I resisted that for a long, long time and then I got smart. 
So yeah. when you're first starting out, your reputation is your marketing strategy. Oh, Jim Bob started a woodworking business. Man, I really like Jim Bob. Let yep. me see what he has to offer. And so like they're interested right there. So your reputation when you first start out as a human being, as a person in your community is your marketing strategy. Yep. So leverage it, do good, keep a good reputation and uh, don't be afraid to reach out to friends and family and see if anybody's interested. And then once you get a little cash flow rolling, you can dump that into some paid ads or hire another company to help you do that. But for you guys that are just jumping in on Facebook Marketplace and Etsy, um, you're essentially making an online ad mm -hmm. and that that world is just pay to play. Like if you want to reach more people, you got to pay more money to reach them. So learn how to make a good ad on YouTube. Yep. And uh, learn how to learn how to make a good ad first and really get good at the free stuff before you get in the paid stuff. Last one on this side. Last one on this side. We got two sides. Don't you worry. Side. We got 10 questions. 10 questions. The internet's 10 most popular business questions for beginners, <laughs> I think is what I typed into Google. Ow. Let me help you, friends. How do I package and ship my products? <sighs> okay, so. You put it in a box <laughs> and then you mail it. And then you just chuck it in the mailbox. Shipping is a cost that can get away from you really fast. It can be really expensive if you're not careful or you're not smart. First things first, do not walk into the post office. Yes. Do not walk into Kinko's. Do not walk into the UPS store and just say, hi, I want to ship this. That you will, you're paying three times as much as you That's should. That's the most expensive way you could possibly do it. I got three websites for you. If you're trying to ship and do your stuff, go to, I got them written down, Shippo, Shippo.com or GoShippo.com, Pirate Ship or ShipStation. Those three, or I think stamps.com is a fourth one. There you go, bonus, extra one. Um, you can buy postage at a pre-negotiated rate. And these big companies guarantee the Postal Service or UPS or whoever more volume, and so they're well, they're, they lower the rates for you. So um, just make a free account on one of those sites, and I promise you, you'll pay a third of what it would be if you just yes. walked into the post office and said, I want to ship this, please. And it's not like bad shipping times either. You're not like scraping the bottom of the barrel, or it's not one of those things where, yeah, it's cheaper, but it's always a day late. No, it's like actually good shipping rates, good times. I mean, we love it. We can't say enough. Um, so go check those out before you start shipping your products and incorporate that into your business. But then as far as like putting your thing in a box, you just want to make sure it doesn't get damaged. Remember yeah. the uh, remember the science experiment from school where you had to take an egg and drop it like off the roof yes. of the building and you had to protect the egg on the way down? It's basically that game. So if you passed uh, that project in high school, you'll be great. If yep. you failed that project in high school, maybe do your own deliveries. <laughs> So it's basically that game. Yep. If you want to run the science experiment yourself, most of the shipping companies say if you if your box can survive a fall from 10 feet, uh, then you should be good to go. So on to the other side. Here we go. How do I manage inventory? Oh, <laughs> Simplest answer, just keep keep track of your stuff. Count it up every once in a while. Don't just blindly throw things on the rack or, you know, sell things and not, you know, keep track of how much you have left. Oh my gosh. Go on. Anyway, so that's the most important part with inventory. Um, for us, we like to know roughly how many products we're making at one time. Uh, we like to know typically how many we send out per week and we do count it weekly just to make sure we're not like accidentally losing some. Do I have any fellow hoarders out there? Um, I'm a hoarder. Hi. Um, it took me a long time to break the habit, but don't save every little scrap. Yes. It's going to take up too much space. So uh, the how to handle inventory question assumes that you don't have enough space to keep a lot of inventory. And that's because you're keeping a bunch of scraps that are sticking around for five years uh, that are not serving you. So if something isn't moving, if something isn't selling, or you are holding onto a bunch of scraps, um, we started throwing our scraps away. We were burning them at one point mm -hmm. before we started boxing up and shipping them to you guys. So just keep track of everything. And if something Thing is hanging out in the shop for more than a couple months, think about getting rid of it because it's just taking up space. Next. Why do you always peel it backwards? Because I'm left-handed. That's fair. Oh, we got a two-liner. Ooh, we got a long one. What customer service practices should I follow? Be nice. Be nice. Don't be rude. Be patient. That's my biggest thing is, um, 
I have definitely become a more patient person over the last three years because I have had to be patient with customers. Um, a lot of them don't require my patience. I will say that first and foremost. I know everybody's really worried that they're gonna get like these nightmare customers. That's only like maybe 1% of the people you're gonna work with. The rest of people, I wanna be patient with. I love them. They're great. They're fantastic customers. They're repeat customers. Um, I would say though, treat everyone fairly. Yes. And I know that sounds like a no duh sort of thing, but don't treat the nice people better than your bad customers. Treat everybody the same because the people that may seem nice to you up front may ask for something that's just over the line and cutting into your profits too much. You just sort of have to develop a thick skin and just treat everybody equally. If they're really nice, great. Take them to check out, give them a good product, but don't be overly nice and don't give too many discounts. Because it's hard to tell which ones you'll give an inch and they'll take a mile. Sometimes you're like, I swear, they won't manipulate me. They won't over ask. They won't ask for too much. And then two weeks later, they're asking they for something. They made six changes to the project. Yep. Then they want to renegotiate the price before delivery. So exactly. just be careful, treat everybody equally, mm -hmm. and then uh, don't get too excited when somebody's an, an easy customer because you never know what they're going to pull out of their back pocket. So um, just fairness goes both ways. So yep. be fair to yourself as well. Also, quick note, be more generous. I know I just said protect yourself, but also be generous. You will have more people appreciate a generous customer service policy than you will have people that abuse it. They did a study. It's like 8,000 to one yep. is like the number of people that abused um, and like lied and cheat and steal on the study was on Craigslist and, and eBay postings in the early days, but it was like 8,000 to one good actors to bad actors. So just understand like you're not going to get the, the evil manipulative person as often as, as you anticipate. So just be nice, treat everybody fairly. But at the end of the day, know you're going to have to handle returns. One in 50 customers uh, roughly is going to want to return whatever it is that you're selling. So bump your prices up a little bit to accommodate for that. Don't be blindsided when somebody wants to, to return something. Go ahead and bake that into your pricing structure. All right, number eight. Eight. How do I make my products stand out? So <laughs> this was kind of funny because us as makers, like you already make a product that is beautiful. It's amazing. It's high quality. It's unique. It's art and it will stand out just in and of itself. But if nobody knows your product exists, it's impossible for it to stand out. Your product is better, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stand out unless you put it out there. Mm -hmm. So be louder than your competition. Go see more people, go talk to more people, do more events, pay more in ads, do whatever you gotta do to be louder than your competition. That's the only way to get ahead because somebody with a good marketing strategy and a bad product will make more money than somebody with a good product and a bad marketing strategy. Every so, time. Every time. Number nine. I like a number nine with fries. Should I offer custom orders? Mm. It depends. Depends on what kind of business you want to have. If you really enjoy the like the the creative and the artsy aspect of custom orders, go for it. If you have a desire to make a lot of something similar or a lot of the same things, custom orders are probably just going to be a distraction to you because it's taking away time from you perfecting your process to make a lot of the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it's really hard to do both well successfully. Mm -hmm. You're going to reach a point where your custom orders are fighting from your batched out orders and your batched out orders are fighting against you with your custom orders. So yeah. um, if you're going to try to do both, good luck, but also make sure your custom orders that you do take are paying you double what you think you should be charging. And then you'll be able to manage your cash flow a lot better. So yep. that's my little trick there is if you're going to take a custom order, like right now, we don't do any custom orders, but if an order came through, it would have to start at like 15 grand for the job, or I just wouldn't touch it. So, and it would be for like a dining table. So 15 grand for a dining table is a lot. So we don't get very many of those because I want to stay focused right. on the best Right, like a products. custom one, right. like fully custom. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, last one. You want to do the honors? Number 10. Okay, okay. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. Oh, and I'm not even feeling it right. Okay. How do I balance my hobby and business? Oh. Gotcha. Oh. Gotcha. Get a new hobby? <laughs> No, seriously, I don't want to burst your bubble, but like, if you're trying to make money, you're going to have bad days. And I don't want that to ruin your hobby. They might not happen very often, but if you want to stay profitable, your business is going to demand that you do things you do not want to do. It is not going to be 100% fun 100% of the time. 
Anybody that tells you it is, is just straight up lying to you or they're not running a very successful business. But don't let that rob the joy from your hobby. Mm -hmm. Do projects on the side that are for you. Don't post them on Instagram, don't show anybody, just make something that you wanna make and block off the time in the calendar, otherwise, you will ruin the hobby for yourself, mm -hmm. sorry. Try to find something that you do like in the tasks that you don't like. For example, I hated bookkeeping. I hated keeping track of all the receipts and numbers and everything, but I really liked talking with my friend who is a CPA. So we just had a standing lunch appointment once a month and he would come look at our books and yep. we'd sort through the receipts because he was a weirdo that enjoyed that kind of thing. And I got to eat lunch with a good friend. So yep. that's a way to sort of pair something you don't like with something you do like to, to make Make you want to keep doing it. And remember, the hard days are why you make money. Yeah. If it was easy all the time, nobody would make any money. So on the bad days where you're feeling kind of down, just look at what you're making and remind yourself how much money you're charging for it. And that'll put a smile on your face. At least it does for me. Anytime, for I'm, me. anytime I'm sanding cutting boards for just hours, I'm just like $175, $175. $175, that, that adds up pretty quick. So um, if I'm having a bad day, that'll, that'll turn me around. I'm highly money motivated. <laughs> Well, that was the 10 most popular business questions on the internet. I hope you liked our answers. If not, who cares? <laughs> you get what you pay for. This is a free video. So subscribe if you want to see more for us or join the stud stack if you want to join a community of makers who want to spur each other on and encourage each other throughout the week. Don't forget to ring the bell and hit the like button on your way out and we'll see you on the next one. Ask me how I do it. I just stick to the plan.